The Steam Deck has filled a void in my life and has transformed the way that I approach not just gaming, but work too. We will get into that today, to include a casual approach to reviewing the Steam Deck, my experience stressing it under workloads, current accessories I'd recommend, and more. So, getting started right now, we will address impressions and my favorite features up front. The Steam Deck is well packaged as a PC, but one of the coolest things that it does is simplifies the tinkering. Yes, it's opened up on the back end where you can dive as deep as you want, but I feel more like the Steam Deck is a gaming tool first, with other capabilities. What do I mean by capabilities? It has community settings, where other users can map key bindings, tweak settings, and easily share them with other users. You can do whatever you want with it. You aren't locked into the proprietary operating system, like with other handhelds. The Steam Deck is capable of being used in a variety of setups, broadening the scope of the average consumer that this device can work for. It's repairable, upgradable, and companies like iFixit are already settling in for the long haul. I'm not here to go over all of the specs at a granular level, or drop test it or anything like that. My goal is to share my true impressions and actual thoughts on the experience and its capabilities. You can plug into a variety of devices, setups, and docking stations. A quick note on docking stations, there are reports of individuals having issues with aftermarket docks, sometimes bricking their systems in some extreme edge cases. I happen to have a dongle that doesn't allow for external power so much that was less than $20. I know it may sound like a bummer, but I'll happily wait for the official dock to come out from Steam. If you hear other creators telling you that you can just get by with any old USB hub or dock, this may be true, but I wanted to make sure I warn you of what some deck users in the community have dealt with. You should be absolutely sure you check the specifications and power delivery specifications before purchasing a hub dock, dongle, etc. This brings us to the next feature, which allowed me to easily work around not having a USB dock, the Bluetooth connectivity. I have had terrible experiences with wireless peripherals as both a professional and a gamer, and have been hesitant to ever use wireless functionality simply because I already have so many wireless signals going through my office, home, and garage. I am happy to report that I currently have four Bluetooth connections to the Steam Deck, and there has been no noticeable input lag. This is part of the reason why I chose the Royal Kludge RK100 keyboard over the Keychron M4 keyboard. I wanted a wireless, mechanical keyboard as cheap as possible, and these two models were what fit the bill. They are very similar, but the RK100 I chose has two USB ports, while the Keychron does not. I didn't want to get a foldable keyboard or one of the small RII or RI-4s because I plan to use the device for prolonged productivity. You can use pretty much any external controller you like for the Steam Deck. You don't have to game directly on it, or with a mouse and keyboard. You can use Xbox, DualSense, or even a Nintendo Switch Pro controller. I tested my Switch controller, but I use the Super Nintendo model from a company called 8BitDo when I want to play extended retro-style games. You probably won't catch me playing Satisfactory, Star Citizen, or Age of Empires on a controller anytime soon either. Not ready to give in on that one just yet. Another feature that may seem obvious at first is the operating system. Stay with me though. I have been required to use Microsoft, Microsoft server environments, and even Mac throughout my professional career. The last time I had the time, even when I was in IT to even touch Linux, was back during Windows XP. I would dual boot with Ubuntu, OpenSUSE, Red Hat, depending on a client, etc. Linux has come a long way, and what really seals the deal here is the Wine and Proton software, which allows me to use the majority of my programs natively on the Steam Deck. I even downloaded DaVinci Resolve and Studio One 5 Pro, and they both ran just fine. I already edit 4K in 1080p and render in 4K, and with the DaVinci Resolve Cloud software, I can easily remote render a project if I had to finish a video on the Steam Deck while handling dad duties away from my main PC rig. Being able to continue working wherever I'm chasing my youngest at the moment, or being able to go on a day trip on my motorcycle, pulling over at a point of interest, slamming out some scripts, work emails, or thumbnails really appeals to me. This doesn't just go for productivity, but I also have the option to take the overwhelming majority of my gaming library with me too. Every square inch matters when packing for motorcycle travel, so I appreciate being able to use a smaller form factor PC as opposed to my MSI Creator's laptop. 
Moving into the review section, after tinkering with this device obsessively for a couple of weeks, I'm intending for this to be a casual chat. I'm not equipped to go full hardware reviewer and tear the thing apart and map heat signatures. Let's start with the size. Yes, when you add a keyboard, mouse, and other peripherals, one may wonder why not just use a laptop? Well, the answer to this is simple, pricing. Also, the storage solutions can be more creative with the Steam Deck, so you can achieve a pretty small form factor when traveling. Something else to keep in mind is repairability. Valve has released tons of documentation on upgrading, repairing, or accessing the Steam Deck internals. When is the last time you cracked into a laptop to do anything more complicated than add a stick of RAM or an SSD? Better yet, when is the last time the average gamer or working professional took the time to crack open tablets to replace the screen themselves? In this economic climate, can you even get parts for the majority of SKUs that are phased out this year? This is pretty self-explanatory. I'm not here to tell you that you need a Steam Deck, so let's talk about the wonderful stuff. It's large enough to see at arm's length, but isn't too gigantic. Great if you can get a hold of a Dollar Tree picture frame stand. It's not really heavy, it's comfortable to use, and feels solid. Not cheap at all. The weight feels distributed, partly due to the width, I think. I was skeptical about the layout of the buttons, but honestly it doesn't feel weird to play with in handheld mode if you don't have space for a keyboard and mouse where you are going. The button feedback isn't too mushy, it feels tactile and responsive, and I love being able to program them for basically anything, whether in desktop mode or in gaming mode. Also, you can easily have access to your key map and bindings in each game, and can adjust them easily. I do usually run the traditional Steam program in the background while in desktop mode, because the Steam client can overlay your custom binds. The touchscreen is a wonderful addition, but it seems like it needs another update or two in the future. The responsiveness and accuracy isn't as good as a flagship smartphone, but I'm sure that Valve and the community will come up with patches for that. The other wonderful thing is the indicator system that Valve has implemented in the Steam Store, which lets you know if the game has been verified yet. Although, any of the games that I have tested work regardless of whether they are defined as supported on the Steam Deck. The games that I fired up, say Star Citizen, all worked. Continuing with the wonderful stuff, for my Steam Deck, it takes me about two hours to charge it on the stock charger. Then, there's the UI. The UI is quite useful in the Steam side, and has a huge amount of utility and customization. Here are the shortcuts in case you have not found them yet. By the way, if you are enjoying this chat so far, you know what to do. It really is the only way the ominous algorithm knows to pick up my work and share it. One of the most useful shortcuts is to hold the Steam button and B buttons to force quit any game or application you hooked into the Steam side, such as a web browser in case it's not working right. I really appreciate the touches and power of the UI, and look forward to how it gets refined for the future. They have been pushing regular updates and hotfixes, so kudos there also. I'd like to know from you, what is the most exciting thing about the Steam Deck to you, even if you don't plan on picking one up? I would say, for me, the accessibility to entering the PC gaming market for those who would like to take the plunge but not get wrecked by current pricing. Let's chat in the comments down low. Now we move on to stress testing. Moving into how I put the Steam Deck through the ringer, and overtaxed it as I suggested in the thumbnail, I started with installing some intensive programs. I ran some 40 plus megabyte images through GIMP, and it rendered the image fine. I booted up DaVinci Resolve, and worked on the thumbnail there, while using my cheap HDMI dongle to output to an IPS screen. No issues to report, although I won't be doing any serious editing in DaVinci, or audio production in Studio One, until I can get the remote rendering and whatnot established. I really crippled the Steam Deck by loading up some hardcore game saves, most notably, games that I share on the channel. Naturally, I loaded up my satisfactory saves. On stock settings with absolutely no tweaking, I was getting playable frame rates on the Steam Deck itself. Since I have the main rig and access points for internet covering the property, I can also take advantage of Steam's remote play feature for more demanding titles. The Steam Deck supports this natively. One of the last ways that I had time to task the system besides using it for work, productivity, and gaming is by installing a bunch of similar apps in the Discover application of the Steam Deck. For example, I downloaded several apps relating to Wine and Proton, and ran all of them with similar directories to see which ones did what, and which ones would conflict with each other.
In the future, I expect I'll be using a mouse and keyboard with my Steam Deck. I use a mouse and keyboard daily, even though I have several controllers. I mentioned the keyboard I chose because of its price, rebuildability, and feature set. The Royal Kludge RK100 also has a numpad, which is absolutely essential during my workday, so I opted for that form factor. You can get the 60% versions without the numpad for significantly less. Links below. I recommend Logitech MX series mice of pretty much any line. One of the great things about these models is the ability to unhinge your scroll wheel. That's why they have populated every station in my home and office. For an SD card, I recommend an A2 rated SanDisk or Samsung Select Micro SD. There are plenty of tests on this already on YouTube, and I won't recommend anything or something that I haven't tested and verified to give the best performance and minimal issues as possible. Enough said on that, to each his own on what read or write speeds and IOPs they desire. I believe the maximum speed the Steam Deck can read is about 104 megabytes per second, so keep that in mind. I highly recommend getting a hold of a multimedia card reader where you can transfer files quickly or even plug in a second micro SD. Here is a leather skin that I ordered for the Steam Deck. It was shipped when working on this video, as it was a pre-order. If you don't want to get a complete skin, I still highly recommend checking out dbrand's Steam Deck trackpad covers. They come in a variety of colors for about $5 USD plus shipping. I highly recommend protecting those babies. I also ordered some high quality screen protectors, also from dbrand. I have a Mario themed cartridge holder that also holds microSDs that I will use to start my own personal game cartridge collection. If you have something like that laying around, you may end up needing one. I'll keep main Steam games on the internal 512GB SSD and maybe upgrade that one day, but everything else will be sorted onto microSDs. I picked up a temporary basic stand for the Steam Deck 2 for about $13 simply because of the rubber padding on the notch at least to hold me over until Valve releases the official dock. If you need dongles, I'd recommend getting one that doesn't need separate power for now, as discussed earlier, but you do you. For a power bank, I'm currently using a no-code jump starter for cars, trucks, etc., and also a PNY power bank I had laying around. I ordered an EVGA XR1 Pro capture card begrudgingly, but at 50% off coming in at 110 plus tax, you'd be hard pressed to beat the feature set at that price point. I was going to simply use a software plugin called NDI Tools for OBS Studio, but if you know anything about NDI, it is a fantastic software that allows you to essentially bypass a capture card. The problem is, I haven't been able to hook it in to where it will run on the SteamOS side. I can only get it to run in the desktop mode as of making this video. You get better gaming performance on the SteamOS side. Something else that I have been using with the Steam Deck is called a Zoom H5, which functions as not only a microphone and recorder, but also as a mobile audio interface, meaning I can now wire in my pocket operators, stylophone, and more anywhere I like with a PC that has a DAW, digital audio workstation. I've also tested my DaVinci Speed Editor with the Steam Deck. Works flawlessly, a nice peripheral, and hardly an accessory, but something I use regularly. I recommend getting the appropriate USB-C cable that plugs into a power brick, if you have one laying around. The stock one doesn't disconnect from the plug housing, which drives me insane. But I understand why they did it after seeing people brick their Steam Decks with USB hubs and docks from a variety of reputable brands. I use an 8-bit do Super Nintendo Pro or SN30 Pro version, but just about any controller you prefer will work and be easily mappable on the Steam Deck. Finally, wireless headphones are great. Until you need something to scrub audio. I use some OnePlus Bud Z earbuds when I am using the Steam Deck recreationally, and then I wire Audio-Technica ATH M50 XBTs through my audio interface when I need to mix or master audio for work or the channel. No issues with either method. I do get game crashes and freezes on the Steam Deck in both desktop and Steam modes. I have had bugs. I have had to do a lot of manual hooking and file diving in order to get some things going. The average user won't have to do that. But again, options are nice. I'm mostly interested in getting the Steam Deck set up as a mobile workstation and an emulation rig. I have a ton of old systems and cartridges I'd like to convert too. I'll be sure to share links to some amazing community resources, but I can't share websites that have ROMs. It is against my local copyright laws. 
Valve continues to refine the UI and push out frequent updates. I was not expecting the Steam Deck to fill the workflow load that it did. I was really just hoping for at least a decent experience with Steam Remote Play, but I got so much more. Everything that was promised and so much more access to theoretically the largest video game library ever to launch with a console. The Steam Deck is getting me to be more open to a backlog of games too, including retro. I am an older gamer and really appreciate the ability to hop into some OG Wolfenstein, Final Fantasy, Lunar, Chrono Trigger, Pokemon Uranium, you get the idea. I never really embraced the Nintendo Switch, although I did customize it heavily with that old school Nintendo 64 transparent color scheme, I'll be sure to show that. My kids love it, but I've only beat like 4 games on it, it just didn't have enough features or options to hook me in. The Steam Deck is a much more fun option for me because of the flexibility it has. I'm really immersing myself into Linux and the emulation community, and I'm having fun and finding myself excited more than I have been since at least the announcement of the first generation of Ryzen. The Steam Cloud support is great, and it works between Windows, the Steam Deck, Linux, and the Mac so you can log out on your Windows rig from Satisfactory or Stellaris, go to the office, and continue on the Steam Deck. That's awesome! I have only barely tapped the flexibility of this little guy, and I can't wait to tinker with this capable little PC more. I look forward to aftermarket parts as well, maybe even some upgraded joysticks? Fingers crossed. Hopefully someone takes the challenge, but I'm sure my controls will last a long time, as I'll be using peripherals mostly. Don't forget about streaming services like Xbox Game Pass. I'm considering getting a subscription to a company called Shadow Cloud Gaming when they develop a Linux version, or potentially messing with getting that running in the meantime since that program isn't on Steam natively. When I pre-ordered the Steam Deck day one, yeah, just received it, I had fully intended on loading Windows 10 via a micro SD or an external SSD, whichever maxed the read speeds. While researching other user experiences and their configurations, I found that people are having issues with Windows on the micro SD where it will crash Windows, so best to wait for a power deliver patch or something where it doesn't crash the Steam Deck while the screen is dimmed, sleeping, etc. I'm not willing to wipe the Steam Deck, dual boot windows only is my preference. For my own reasons, I have no intention at this time of upgrading to Windows 11, and was considering switching to Linux anyways. As I no longer have computers assigned to me by a university, or a state entity I work for, the more I use Linux, the more I realize that I can just use a virtual machine when I'm doing something for a client that requires Windows. This device may not be for everybody, and not everyone will take advantage of its full capabilities. You can just use the Steam Deck in its gaming mode, and I suspect most will do just that. If you are looking for a device that works 99% of the time without ever having to hook files or search posts in Google Search to install programs, games, or applications, this device can still be for you. The built-in indicators for Steam games and the UI in gaming mode is sufficient. It is critical to remember that this is a PC shoehorned into a handheld format, not a Palm Pilot descendant with Windows loaded on it. There are going to be bugs and glitches, so be prepared that this isn't a Switch. It's not that straightforward. If you appreciated the chat today and my various techniques to help you get more out of your gaming time and you think I earned it, you know what to do. Stay fresh, play how you want, how you can, build something awesome, and stay you.